Bob Loxton, and this is uh, Orbital and Launch Mechanics, short course that lasts four days. And this particular site is in Laurel, Maryland. And we just want to do a short segment of it, of the course, which happens to do with uh, tethered satellites. And so we're looking at alternatives to propulsion, chemical propulsion. And one way you can have an alternative to chemical propulsion is tethered tethered satellites. So this is some material on tethered satellites. The very first time I ever taught this course was in Florence, Italy for Galileo Optics. And Galileo Optics was a company that was ended up releasing two tethered satellites from the reusable space shuttle. And this is a typical uh, satellite of the type they released. It re was released straight up from the shuttle and was they intended to reel it out 12 miles, 12 miles above the shuttle. And it had an electrically conductive tether running electricity from the tethered satellite back down to the shuttle orbiter. They ended up releasing two of these satellites. The first one, the tether snagged after 800 meters. And so that experiment was unfortunately a failure. So on the next launch, they reeled the tether out about 11, mi 11 miles before it, it uh, broke. There was a break in the tether in the copper uh, tubing in the center of the tether, and this caused a short circuit of, and it burned through the tether. So the satellite was released into space. But before releasing it, they had shown that they generated even more electricity than had been intended. The spacecraft itself weighed about 1,000 pounds, a half ton spherical tethered satellite conducting 5,000 volts uh, downward from the satellite. It used a tenth of an inch uh, copper, Teflon, Kevlar, Nomex tether. Those last three chemicals are space age plastics. So it was a copper center surrounded by space age plastics. The tensile strength that was expected was no more than 13 pounds of force, but the tether itself, had it remained intact, would have been able to resist 400 pounds of force. It didn't break because of forces on it, it broke because there was electrical arcing that burned through the outer sheet. Now, Aviation Week and Space Technology said tethers can even be used as virtual skyhooks to lift satellites from the Earth's surface and swing them in arcs up to geosynchronous orbits. And that leads us naturally to the last topic in this session, which has to do with Project Skyhook. I was working at Rockwell International on various projects with my friend Bob Africano many years ago. We were both about 23-year-old engineers, and we loved the space program. We thought this was the greatest job anyone could ever have. and so. We were always trying to spread the word to the general public about the wonders of space. We would catch an insurance salesman at a party, back him into a corner, tell him all about the space program. We later formed a group called the Thursday Exchange Club, in which we met on the lunch hour every Thursday and had somebody do a 45-minute presentation on space technology. We kept this up for about two years, altogether doing about having about a hundred of these sessions in which we learned about space technology. But we wanted to spread the word further. And one day Bob came in with a newspaper article from the company newspaper in which they said that they were looking for instructors to go down to the California Museum of Science and Industry and teach high school students about space. We got very excited. We wrote up an outline for such a course and we called it a wonderful title the fundamentals of space exploration. We practically went into orbit ourselves when we thought of that title, the fundamentals of space exploration. So we would drive down to the California Museum of Science and Industry each week. We weren't even given mileage, we, the pay was zero. But we had a wonderful time teaching these high school students, but what we learned was they didn't know any mathematics. And so we had to figure out a way to teach them about space technology without using any mathematics. 
And that was when I thought of something my brother had told me when I was a young boy, that if you would build a tower tall enough, climb up it, turn loose of a rock, it would, autom it would just hang off your fingertips. And that would be the launch of a geostationary satellite. So I knew that if we could build such a tower 19,300 miles high on the equator, that we would be able to launch satellites merely by climbing up the tower and releasing them. And we had shown that it took only about 38 cents worth of gasoline to generate enough power to power the elevators to drive a one pound mass up into a geosync orbit, compared with about $4,000 to put it into a low altitude orbit and about $10,000 per pound to launch it into geosync. So we started teaching our students about tower launch satellites and they got very, very excited. Now, we realized that if you built a 19,300 mile tower on the Earth's equator, that it would exert a tremendous force on the bedrock below. But my friend Bob Africano asked me what we could do about that. And I said, build the tower taller. You see, if you build the tower higher than 19,300 miles, it will be pulled up by a centrifugal force, which is greater than the gravity on that material. And therefore, the tower will get lighter and lighter. And being mathematicians, we immediately ask, how tall would the tower have to be before it was weightless? And so we then calculated that if you would build a tower 100,000 miles high, it would be weightless. It wouldn't exert any force at all on the ground below. And if you built it taller than that, you'd have to have anchor it to the ground. Otherwise, it would go cartwheeling off into space. Our students got very excited about this. We also realized that if you released a payload lower than 19,300 miles high, that it would go into an elliptical orbit with the release point being at apogee. And we call that a elliptical orbit tower launch satellite. Bob asked me one day, well, if you release a satellite like that, it'll bang into the tower. What can we do about that? And I said, cut a hole in the tower. He said, that's a good idea, but the next time it impacts, it'll impact at a different altitude. So we began to wonder, is there an altitude where you could release a satellite that would be, that it would go through the same two holes over and over? And it turned out there's an infinite number of such drop altitudes that if you release it, it'll go through a perigee hole and an apogee hole. And then we realized that there were one hole drop altitudes and there's an infinite number of those and they alternate with the two hole drop altitudes. One day Bob came in and he said, if we would build a tower 19,300 miles high, tear the tower down, its elevator cable would hang suspended upward in space. What I said, it would hang suspended upward in space, how can that be? He said there are no forces pushing the, t the cable sideways, there are no forces compressing it, all the forces stre stretch it. And so therefore, if you put a 100,000 mile uniform cable in orbit about the Earth, it would hang suspended now, in, in space. In the course, we have a bonus for the students. Each student is given a GPS receiver for their own use. And this is a very capable receiver, capable of navigating automobiles with great precision. It displays the location of the car always at the center of the screen, and the road ahead always points toward the top, and the highways are shown in proper perspective. It has a voice synthesizer chip inside that gives directions to the users as they're driving their cars. Three different times it will warn the user to get into the proper lane to make the next turn. And it will direct the, the user optimally from whatever location in the country he may start out at to whatever destination in the country he wants to end up at. And by the way, if you miss a turn, nothing bad happens. The receiver will merely recalculate your orbit from where you find yourself to where you want to go. So you don't have to go back and retrace your steps. They're wonderful little receivers and the students really enjoy receiving this special gift in conjunction with the course.